Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. It has been a busy first first month to start the NHL season, and I think it's time we sit down, talk some shop, and of course, dive right in to the latest injuries and, of course, the latest update in the Shane Wright saga. Your Locked On Flames. Your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome back or welcome to Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me on this fine Monday afternoon, evening, or wherever, what or whenever you're listening to this podcast, the Ducks are going to be without one of their top defensemen in Jamie Drysdale for the entire season. Jake Ottinger will be missing some time for the Stars as well. And Shane Wright and Dave Haxtell still figuring it out in Seattle. And before we do dive into this, please make sure that you are subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts and wherever you feel like tuning into us. And of course, uh, YouTube as well. And make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice little review. It it helps the show. (laughs) But let's jump right into this because this is some pretty big news coming out of the Pacific Division. And that would be Jamie Drysdale. And his torn labrum. It was announced today that Jamie Drysdale could be out for the rest of the regular season. And he will be undergoing surgery for a torn labrum. It is expected to be sidelined for four to six months. This injury occurred in the four to six, four to nothing loss (laughs) against the Vegas Golden Knights on Friday. The Ducks are currently two, six and one. I feel like this shatters a lot of hope and any hope that this team kind of had for themselves. I think that the expectation for the Ducks this year were high going into the year, especially once they had signed um, John Klingberg. Mason McTavish had an excellent time at World Juniors. Trevor Zegris is going to Trevor Zegris. And of course, you know, with Jamie Drysdale. And this this is brutal. This this is a very, very big loss for Anaheim. And they did just beat the Leafs in overtime. And I think that there was a, there were some concerns there that they were gonna lose as well. But um he's young. This sounds like it's his first real significant injury. I don't know anyone that's, like, recovered from this. So I can't, you know, say how, you know, this this 30-year-old recovered versus, you know, a 20-year-old. But I will say that um, I, I, I would say it's probably going to be, like, four months before he touches the ice again in a competitive way. I just – I don't think that teams are going – especially teams that are necessarily out of playoff pictures or not really fighting for a wild card spot. Okay, let me back up. I think it will depend on where the team is in, say, four months. So let's say, you know, by the end of March, the team is well out of a playoff picture or a wild card spot then I don't think that they're going to try to be like, okay, like, come on, come back. I think that they will ease him in to, you know, any off season rehabbing and whatnot. But I think it, it does depend on, you know, if they are in a wild card spot or where they are as a team in the standings. And I just, I think that Drysdale is, I think that any of these NHL players are, going to push aside any sort of injury or any sort of discomfort or pain to play in the playoffs specifically, not the regular season, uh, depending on when it is. But I believe Chris Tanev actually had this surgery and 
that's not fun. I, if you remember, this pretty much took him out of the playoffs for the Flames. And so, obviously, if Chris Tanev, who has admitted that he has a rather high pain tolerance, isn't able to play, then I would assume that 20-year-old Jamie Drysdale is not able to play. But, you know, this is one of those situations where it's happening early enough in the season where it where he could come back. But again, it all depends on where his team is at closer to that return date. And four to six months, you could be a whole new hockey team. Just because you're two, six, and one now doesn't mean you're going to still have a losing record at that time frame. I mean, potentially, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have a good picture for the Anaheim Ducks. I, I didn't think that this was going to be their season. And I think that this kind of, I don't want to say sets them back because obviously this isn't a permanent injury or a loss or anything. So I, I just, I do think that this uh, potentially tables the idea that the the Ducks could make the playoffs. And without him, their defense does get a little bit weaker, obviously. But coming up next, we are going to talk about yet another injury, this time in Dallas and the first domino to potentially fall in the, the downfall in Dallas. But... Before we do that, let me tell you about our friends at BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the NBA. And the new season is here, so jump ahead, jump on it. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your events, all of your favorite games, including the MLB World Series, MMA, boxing, and golf, is at your fingertips with BetOnline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. Thank you all for tuning in to Locked on Flames. If you're new here, hi, hello. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and you don't want to miss an episode. We have a lot of fun stuff coming out this week. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. Jake Ottinger left the game against the New York Rangers on Saturday. And um, it was a lower body injury. And today, the general manager came out and said that he will be reevaluated in a week. I... I don't like when goalies get hurt because I feel like it is the start of like something bigger, especially this young, this early on in his career, he's 23 years old. He's still young, obviously it's still his first few years, but I don't, I just feel, I feel like once you start getting injured, they just, the hits keep coming, especially as a goaltender. So far this season, Ottinger has a <laughs> a 0.952 save percentage and a 1.5 goals against average. This is a tough, tough loss for the Dallas Stars. You know, I think last postseason was a great time to be a Dallas star, especially if you were uh, Jake Ottinger. Jake Ottinger pretty much carried this team through the first round of the playoffs, and he was the reason that game seven against the Flames went to overtime. So, you know, losing him this early in the season uh, is inevitable in some ways, you know, not inevitable, but I think Stuff like this happens and you're forced to, you know, reassemble your team. And the the Stars have to do this in such an odd way because they don't have enough cap space to call up Anton Hudobin. Um, they signed Matt Murray. No, not that one. A different one. To an entry-level contract. And they are able to call him up. Now, 
what does this mean for Dallas? Uh, depends if this is long term or not. It, it definitely depends on if this is long term, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be incredibly long term. But I mean, a week is a week, and then you're pushing closer to American Thanksgiving at that point, and we know that that's kind of a good or like the first indicator of where teams are going to stand for the rest of the season. But if you listen to any of my shows in the off season, you know that I pegged the Dallas stars to be a team that has a setback. I feel like they had a major setback after they got to the Stanley cup final. And then, you know, they ended up making it into the playoffs last year and being a very good and competitive team But was that sustainable enough? And especially as their core gets older and they don't want to pay young players, are they going to be able to sustain, you know, a winning record and make it to the playoffs again? I don't know. But is this the first domino to fall there? I think that's really what it comes down to. And we just have to keep an eye on them. I absolutely hated playing the Dallas Stars in the playoffs. I think that... uh, Jay Gottinger can just respectfully not play against my teams. I don't like playing against Jay Gottinger. I do not like – the Stars aren't a dirty team. That's But I do feel like sometimes the, <laughs> the Flames are a little undisciplined against them because I think that there is a little bit of, like, this heated rivalry, but not so much anymore, especially now that um, – Klingberg isn't there because that's what started the issues in game one. Hmm. We'll have to reevaluate that and see how that, how their first game against each other goes. But I do have to, you know, give Jay Gottinger credit for not wanting to miss out on uh, healing time and not make this get worse again. Let's give people credit where it's, again, the bare minimum. But, hey, it's due. Thank you for listening to your body because that is something that we don't always do in the NHL or professional sports. But, again, this is this is a very tough loss for the Stars. And head on over to Locked On uh, Dallas Stars to listen to Dane's take on this. I think that he'll have a much clearer picture as he is the local expert. But I don't really like that they don't have the cap space to call up Anton Hudobin and instead have to go with this kid, Matt Murray, that I don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen for them there, sort of sketchy situation. Uh, It's a shaky situation for sure. And I'm kind of curious to see, you know, how the rest of the team responds to it. Because I think when you're playing in front of a guy like Jake Ottinger, you have the confidence and you, you don't have to play like your 150% defense through the entire game. You know, you can lax a little bit, especially when you're going up against like a fourth line or whatever. But here, we don't really know what Matt Murray is going to give us at an NHL level. And coming up next, we, we got to talk some more Shane Wright because this kid is, I, I feel bad for him. I, I really do because, oh man, Dave Haxtell is not making his rookie season very easy. Thank you all for tuning into locked on flames as always. Make sure that you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well. What what is happening in Seattle? Last year, we were talking about Seattle's inaugural season and how they took all – well, first, how their roster was leaked. And then how they traded away their captain at the trade deadline. Uh, And then Brandon Tanev got hurt came back, basically was an entirely different team. They didn't want to pay Ryan Donato. And now it's a different team. And now, you know, Maddie Beneers is ready 
to play some NHL time. And you also have Shane Wright, which I felt like, you know, there was clearly a reason why he dropped to number four. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to sit here and speculate on an 18 year old's behavior, but what on earth is going on in Seattle that Dave Haxtell won't even let him play a game and like from his family that flew in from the other side of the country. Like you're just going to scratch him for three games. Why are you not sending him down to the OHL? Um, I believe it's his team is in Kingston and it doesn't make sense. His waiver is exempt. No one is going to, like, you don't have to worry about losing him or anything like that. And yet Dave Haxel has him stapled to the press box and just watching the games. And Dave Haxel also gave a comment here that I'm pulling up right now um, when asked about it. <laughs> Dave Haxel said he's expecting a similar lineup tomorrow against the Penguins and more on Shane Wright. He's making progress. He's working on things and deciding. And he, he's making progress. He's working on things and doing things we need and want him to do outside game action. He's going to get back into a game sooner or later. What the heck is going on? What do they mean by off ice things? What is going on? Is he involved in like some sort of like secret spy? Just kidding. I don't want to like make a joke and have it like come back and be like a cease and desist but like is he is Shane Wright a problem and this isn't me insinuating he is because I don't know anything about the kid but is there something going on off the ice that the Kraken are like oh we need to iron these kinks out before we even let you hit the ice again are you you know he's only getting not even 10 minutes a night not even seven minutes a night on ice. His last five games, like none, he has nothing above 10 minutes, nothing even close to 10 minutes. He's getting about five, six minutes a night. And for him to be scratched in all three games when his family is in town tells me that there is trouble a brewing, whether that be from the front office or something else. I just, I don't like it. Um, you know, obviously my heart, my heart, my gut is to go with, you know, side with the players because these coaches sometimes don't always know what's best. But I'm just, I'm confused. I don't know why they're not playing him and why they're not allowing him to go back to the OHL and develop more. If they're worried about his game, go let him play where he's going to get significant playing time versus where, you know, he's working on things. How, like, how vague is that? Is he cutting construction paper? That's a thing. Is he carving a turkey or a pumpkin? Or is he doing, like, things to strengthen his ability to, like, his hockey IQ? Is he playing, like, is he doing drills? Like, what is going on there? I'm so curious. And I'm sure Erica and I are going to unpack this on our crossover episode because the Flames and Kraken go at it Tuesday night. So I'm very, very intrigued to get her side of things. And that will do it for me today before like my the gears are going in my brain and I'm just very perplexed. But thank you all for listening to today's episode of Locked on Flames. As always, you can find the show wherever you get your platform or wherever you get your podcasts, rather, and you can tune in on any streaming platform, including YouTube. And until then, uh, go Flames and justice for Shane Wright.